Hello students, welcome to part C of the topic Human Reproductive System. In this section, we are going to learn about oogenesis. Oogenesis is a process in the female human reproductive system that involves growth of a mature ovum. Oogenesis occurs in the outermost layer of the ovaries. It all started with the development of primordial follicle in the fetal ovary. In compared with the spermatogenesis that only stimulated when a human male reaches sexual maturity, oogenesis in human female starts much earlier. The development of eggs begins during the fetal stage of the female. As the female fetus grow, the eggs in her ovary starts to develop. The primordial cells undergo repetitive mitotic division, producing larger cells called oogonia. This process is known as phase 1 of the oogenesis multiplication. Bear in mind that this phase started during fetal development. Similar with spermatogenesis, in this phase repetitive mitosis takes place, thus producing many diploid oogonia. Oogonia grow into larger cells with more cytoplasm and now term as primary oocytes. This multiplication with growth phase will continue until the prophase 1 of meiosis 1. The ogonia will remain dormant until it is triggered as the female finally reaches sexual maturity. Okay, so remember that oogenesis occurs in the ovary. In multiplication phase, the primordial follicle cells will multiply and thus producing larger cells known as oogonia. This happens during fetal development. When a female reach puberty, the hypothalamus secretes GnRH and this GnRH stimulates the anterior pituitary to secrete FSH and LH. Both of these hormones will trigger the growth of a few follicles in the ovary. On top of that, FSH and LH also stimulate certain cells in the follicle, which are granulosa cells and theca cells, to further release other sex hormones. Granulosa cells are stimulated by the FSH to secrete progesterone after ovulation, while the LH stimulates the thicker cells to secrete estrogen. So remember, both types of cells are found in the follicles. Oogenesis now resume with the second phase, which is maturation. This is triggered by the release of FSH and LH during puberty. So, as FSH stimulate the growth of the follicles that have been dormant since fetal development, meiosis 1 is now resumed. As a result of meiosis 1, the primary oocytes are transformed to become secondary oocytes and polar body. Polar body will degenerate. This phase takes one menstrual cycle and therefore secondary oocytes are only produced and released once in every menstrual cycle. 
Let's recap the maturation phase with this diagram. Primary oocytes are produced from the previous phase, multiplication. So, every female baby is born with these primary oocytes. As a female reaches puberty, follicles which contain the primary oocytes started to grow. This is when meiosis 1 takes place. After meiosis 1, secondary oocyte is produced and released out from the ovary in a process known as ovulation. It also produces polar body, which will later degenerate. Always remember that this phase only happens after a female reaches puberty, and it only takes place once in every menstrual cycle. Next, the released secondary oocytes will either continue with meiosis 2 or not. This is determined by whether there is a fertilization or none. If there is no fertilization, there will be no meiosis 2 and no further development will take place. Secondary oocytes can only live within 24 hours after ovulation. So if there is no fertilization, it will be passes into the uterus as an immature egg and discharges during menstruation. On the other hand, if there is fertilization, meiosis 2 will be completed. It will produce ovum, which is the fertilized secondary oocytes, and also a polar body. Similarly, polar body degenerates. Okay, so one more time. Secondary oocyte will proceed to meiosis 2 if there is fertilization. If there is no fertilization, there will be no meiosis 2 and the secondary oocyte disintegrate and discharge during menstruation. Yet, if there is fertilization, meiosis 2 will produce ovum and polar body. Okay, we are done with oogenesis. Really easy, right? We have one last subtopic, which is in part D. So see you in the last part.